tenth day of the first month of the Islamic calendar in the year 61 on the hot desert plains of Karbala, a small city just south of the current Iraqi capital of Baghdad. A small group of 73 noble individuals were massacred by an army of 70,000. The victims were respected followers of the religion of Islam. The perpetrators, led by Yazid, son of Muawiyah, claimed to follow that very same religion. The leader of the small group of men, women and children was the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, Hussein, son of Ali. Only 50 years had passed since the death of the last Messenger of God, and yet already the Islamic nation, the Ummah, was in turmoil. The events that led to the tragedies in Karbala, however, did not begin with the reign of Yazid as the Caliph, the leader of the Ummah. They began to unfold in the last moments of Muhammad's life. In the eleventh year of the Islamic calendar, in the holy city of Medina, the Prophet Muhammad was nearing the end of his life. The members of his household and close companions, who had stood by him in times of both ease and difficulty, remained near his bedside until he left this world. On news of his death, while some mourned and grieved the loss of their beloved, others were preoccupied in the conspiracy to obtain power for themselves. You would imagine that this person, being on his deathbed, having warned the people on so many different occasions of his, of his impending uh, passing away, uh, you would imagine that there would be a very large crowd of people surrounding him, attending to his every wish and his every request, basically praying uh, for his quick recovery. And yet, when you look at historical accounts, you see a very different picture. Whilst those who had heeded the Prophet's calls and already given their allegiances to Ali were busy burying Muhammad, a secret meeting was being held between several tribal leaders in a small hut, or saqifa, in an attempt to secure the future leadership of the Ummah. These leaders all sought to grasp the rulership of the Islamic nation in turn ensuring that only they were the sole beneficiaries of power. Initially what happened was there was a, a conspiracy to conceal the Prophet's death. Um, there were calls made that anyone claiming that the Prophet has died will be beheaded. In other words, the idea was to contain the situation, control the, uh, the, the emotional outpour that would inevitab inevitably ensue after the Prophet's uh, martyrdom uh, or, or passing away. And the idea was to contain all of that until some sort of, uh, of an interim co government was, was in place. It wasn't a democratic process. It wasn't a lobbying process taking place. It was essentially a bunch of people fighting one another over uh, the opportunity to fill that void. Those who remained loyal and thought that we have already, we have already paid allegiance to Ali. How could we discuss our thing and try to rethink about it? And they refused to pay allegiance to, or to even take part in this sort of discussion. Upon hearing of the meeting that took place at Saqifa, Ali and his loyal supporters gathered at his house to discuss the situation at hand. The tribal leaders who had by now chosen Abu Bakr as the new Caliph of Islam took it upon themselves to obtain Ali's allegiance, if necessary, by force. 
um, there was an ambush that took place against the house of Imam Ali. And the really tragic aspect of this is that Imam Ali was not just any other companion to the Prophet. Uh, he was not just the closest friend to the Prophet. He was not just the one who was raised by the Prophet himself. Uh, he grew up in the house of the Prophet of Islam. 